In here, we pour whiskey, 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 whiskey. You were that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers are hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers. How you living, baby boy? Yes. Welcome to Whiskey Ginger. Cheers. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Bomp. My guest today is one of my favorite people on earth. Don't be flattered. I say that for all my guests, but I really mean it with you. <laughs> is Mr. Jack Knight. Jack Knight, thanks for coming through. Hi. I'm excited. We were talking off camera before this got started yeah. about uh, the Me Too movement. You had some comments. Go for it. I'm 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 one of those people who are like super... Uh, I'm, I'm as with the Idris Elba comment where he was just saying like, if you have nothing to hide, you'll be totally fine. I feel that way, but I just want to see... That sounds. That's what a white dad says, by the way. I know. Yeah. That's a very white dad when it's like... Well, if you got nothing, let the let the government have your computer. Right, but everything. I don't know. I'm a big believer in karma. I'm a big believer in everything circles around, and so uh, all these women and all these gay people who are talking hella shit is gonna come and hit it's y'all. It's coming back. It. it always starts with white you men. Think so, you think so? Then it goes to black people. Then it's gonna go to white women. Then it's gonna go to black women who trickles too, down. And then gay niggas is next, and I, that's gonna be <laughs> so funny. Is that the, that's the all pinnacle? gay people me tooing? Uh, gay people are getting me too too. I'm from Seattle, man. These niggas, these gay niggas be pushing each other. So wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You, so you think it starts from the most privileged to the least privileged will eventually get me too as well? Yeah, it won't, get it, won't, out. it won't be as big of an article, right? But within the community that the, that it is, people will know. So white dudes, yeah. White women, no. Black dudes, black dudes. Just because you're it, still a dude. Just because you're still a dude. And, white dude, and, and me black too dude. is about the but the, the the whoever has the power. With right. The so dude. white dude, black dude, white woman, mm-hmm. black woman, mm-hmm. and then like you know the missy miscellaneous. Then it okay. Then, gen, like the then age, genderless. No, like they're in between, but we don't uh, really like think it's non-gender be, specific. Yeah. Then uh, then blind gay people without a right arm. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> then, so, then then paraplegics then, who can't who then are firefighters. Fi- the fi- they fit. Yeah. They fit right. right they there. fit right in. Yeah. They're right down there. <laughs> So, so um, it is funny because I was talking about this uh, with Moses. We were talking after I did that podcast. And it is funny to think how many people who are pointing a lot of fingers, they point fingers mm-hmm. because they got something to hide. Yeah. So the, the first person to throw a stone to me obviously lives in a glass house. Yes. Because they, and they don't think about it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know who I was. Somebody, somebody on Twitter, there was a comedian on Twitter who was talking crazy shit about not performing where Louis performed. Those people, those comedians. Yeah. One. Um, like, why do you need to say? It? That's and, my point. Is and, like, you know, me and Sam J. Yeah. You know, the, yeah, I love Sam J. Very, very great comedian, good, mm-hmm. close friend of mine. We yep. always talk about this. If you can't hoop, what you do is judge the court. Right. Right. If you can't, like, if there's people who can't go to the comedy store and do the OR. Right. That can do festivals with me and do other alt shows with me, and I do more alt shows than I think you do. Yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah. I used As, to, but yeah, I, I but I quit. do hella alt shows, and so like when I do the, I could do both. And when people are like, oh, you did a fucking comedy store, that must all you had to do was run up there and say gay or whatever. Like, no, nah, you don't. You got to talk to an Australian. That's yeah. fucking hard. Yeah, you got to talk to a tourist. At, at, at 1 a.m. in the morning. Right. See, I think that's that's a huge misconception. I used to do a lot of alt shows. I've talked about it, I think, on this podcast before. I used to do a lot of alt or east side shows when I first started because that's all there was. I wasn't mm-hmm. at the, the store. The scene's dying, though. Well, let me tell you why the scene is dying. And that's exactly, a, that's that's a perfect way to talk about it because I did it back then because that was a great outlet for young comics who were writing a lot to do shit. And I stopped doing it because I felt there was such a click, a bullshit click mentality mm-hmm. that wasn't predicated upon how funny you were. No. It was all about uh, localized status. It was it was another high school. Back of the room laugh. Exactly. Yeah. Big issue. But it was another high school of the kids in high school who weren't good at being in well, high school. Well, that's the irony, right? None of these yeah. people were cool in high school, so now yeah. they're cool there. And I'm not talking to everyone in that community. I'm just saying it started to become that way for me mm-hmm. about five or six years ago. So mm-hmm. I quit. I quit going. You and just I stopped w- doing the spots because I've seen you. I've seen you at. I've seen you at show. We've done. We've all done. Shows we've together. done all shows together. I just yeah. stopped asking or talking. You know, like that's an old show right there. You know, like I used to go to Nerd Melt. Uh, right, 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 right. I used right, to do all that right, shit, right, right, and right. I still love a lot of mm-hmm. those people that I w- that I started with. Great like, comedians in there. Um, but it started to become such a clicky thing that like the irony was they were talking shit about the comedy store like that was the click. But I was like, no, bro, this is such a high schooly mm-hmm. click thing over there. It is a click, just like any fucking any business has a click of moving up, but. You had to be funny as fuck to kill to on those even, stages. To, yeah, to Just, get to the stage to kill on the you, stage. But like in in defense of what they were kind of saying, the comedy store does allow a lot of uh, bullshit motherfuckers off the fraternity aspect Truth. of it. But like, to, but I think they're cutting to, down to, on that. They are, but I got passed because I followed. You're one of the bullshit motherfuckers that know it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like Adam passed me because he put me after Rogan doing thirty. Yeah, good luck. So it's like you if you can't 
follow Rogan doing right. Rogan and you know that place is built by Rogan. But, well, you know, and, and, and the cheap shot that someone could say is and by the way I'm not taking shots at anybody in no, the alt no, community no. whatsoever I'm just saying it got different for me and it got weird for me and the comedy store was a way better home for me because mm -hmm. because of that reason right I'm not like Joey Diaz mm -mm. right Joey Diaz cocksucker motherfucker yeah, yeah, yeah. like dude I love him his energy is unbelievable it's so hard to match mm -hmm. the, the to me the hardest and most impressive thing in the world is when a comic who's nothing like Joey like Ali Wong or someone like that who is the Flips opposite the thing. Right, I love when people who, flip who the can thing. take something so insanely its own energy mm -hmm. and then change it to theirs come on man because I gotta say a lot of the other shows I did around town it felt like I was listening to the same comic set mm -hmm. after set after set because they all kind of had the same style but that makes know? it easier for the audience to consume totally so like that why everyone kills no one's really killing everyone's just kind of riding a wave everyone's whoever doing is. well yeah right no like, one's really killing right and that's why I mean I'm not as high in the lineup as you, but like I'll go after a Fahim or I'll go after like a, a Eleanor who are right. just up there with right. it. And I gotta like, okay, let me flip this back down and hit like the cool black angle and then right. fucking. Ride I also that do wave. the cool black angle though. But you do it better than me, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> you are my first black guest and obviously my last. You know, I don't you, know. <laughs> you didn't you didn't get Byron on this? No, dude. I'm, hey, listen, you know what's so funny? Is out, out of all the friends I have in this business, I'm going out to people that I am really interested in and mm -hmm. And a lot of the people I've reached out to either don't don't have time right now or they really want to do it, but it's just like everything is kind of you know it flux. It's kind of it's, it's, it's a weird hard. time. It's a weird time in comedy. But in the year. I'm gonna get everyone that I, that we love that that you know I know and everyone Byron's loves dope. you. So it's like a very you'll be fine. We'll see. No, like we'll, I've never we'll I've never heard a bad thing about you. I could tell. I, I'm gonna email you a whole list of shit that I've heard. I plant mics all over the place and I find out what people <laughs> are saying about me. I'm fucking them up. Um, but what I, what I do want to talk to you about, uh, actually one Anything. of the, one of the dudes in here was talking about it earlier was black Twitter, the idea of yeah. black Twitter yeah. and it's prominence right now and what's mm -hmm. going on. Right. Cause like all um, the jokes, every single joke from late night is stolen for black Twitter and it's really fucked up. It's, it's fucked up. It's how come no, how come up. no one's talking about it? How come um, it's not getting more, like more, more heat and more Well, wave? the people, the people who talk about things and the people who circulate the ideas and circulate the articles and like the split siders and the vultures and the, right. This, this is my point, and this is no shade to anyone who did the Netflix 15 that I did. Sure, uh, you did them. I did them. Yeah. Tim Dillon and Sam J weren't on any list for the Netflix 15s. What, what do you mean by that? They weren't like, oh, any of the. Um it's all narrative built. Right. Everything is narrative built and it's like right. fucking sucks because this is the one place you're supposed to go to destroy narratives. It's comedy. Totally. That's what the whole thing is built that's on top we of. That's why we do it. That's why Lenny Bruce is butt ass naked from the cops for. Right. He right. died he, he died booty naked just so we can talk shit about narrative. 100%. And then you're going to add more narrative with these other articles and shit. And so the reason why no one brings up these black Twitter arguments is like, okay, if we bring up all these facts, then Zach Fox, uh, Javon, Jabuki. Uh, um, uh, no, no, uh, all these amazing black Twitter writers, they're going to take their jobs. Right. So if they have, if they write the articles about black Twitter writing all the jokes, the niggas who are writing for Vulture, the niggas who are writing for Split Sider, they want to write for Colbert. They want to write for of course, Seth Meyers. Of course. So if they bring light to the people who, who are they're stealing the jokes from, that means they're knocking themselves off the position right. to get to the job. Right. And it's just, it's just some white supremacy shit. Because in reality, every, if every Colbert joke is just, Every punchline is some shit from the gay community. Every punchline is some shit from the black community. Mm -hmm. Every punchline is some shit from the black female community. And then, and once you once you bring light to that thing, the people who bring light to shit are white, right? But but how then then explain to me this when it is a, an inherent black joke, the the a late night show takes it and makes it white and their spin because they soften it or they cut the edges off. You mean like they you just still gotta, you still got to talk to this crowd. You still got to talk to the people right. who go and see Ellen in the middle of the day. They're not mm -hmm. going to understand the very deep cut of a black Twitter no. joke. Well, it's too meta, right? It's too meta. So they got to say the easiest black Twitter thing. Right. But they, but they, you, what we have to do now as a comedian, and you know this just like anyone else, is like we have to play both. Yeah. We have to be able to go to the motherfucking middle of Omaha and still be like funny. But then also like not be hack considered to Black Twitter. You have well, to I have to. You, I well, you have to. Well, not everyone has to. Everyone yeah. has a. Everyone has some sem semblance of a duty to try to do that. But my biggest thing is like, you know, a lot of my humor tends to be. Um, I get. I tend to get a little bit of r racial. But like anybody who knows me knows the reason I do that is because I know how uncomfortable and weird people get about racial topics. It's mm -hmm. so weird. But I need to feed that. I need to feed them that because I feel like it's important for us to joke about these things. Otherwise, we corner ourselves mm -hmm. into a place where you're like, "I only tell these kind of jokes. I, yeah. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't, I won't touch on. I, oh, I don't touch that stuff." Yeah. So, well, why? That's the that's that to me. That's the whole freeing point about this. You can say 
you can talk shit about a white dude mm-hmm. just as much as I should be able to talk shit about you. Right. If it's a if it's a if it's, if a, it's a good point. Right. If it's a funny point. But the problem the problem with your saying is there's been so many people with your skin tone that has made garbage jokes about it. Totally. And so you're living in their, their I have rubble. to fight out you're of the You're living bullshit. in their rubble. Unless so I your make a joke, joke has to be fucking brilliant right. to dig out of their rubble. Whereas that's why I do so many fucking gay jokes or bitches jokes because I'm not a woman and I'm not gay. And, I'm, and I like the well, challenge as much yet. as... I mean, I've sucked as many dicks as the best. <laughs> <laughs> Time is yet to tell. Time is yet to fucking but, tell. But I think it's a duty for you to kind of push the limits of things like that. Just because you're not gay and you're not a woman doesn't mean you can't joke about these things as long as the angle is right. My point has always been, if the angle is good, if the joke is clever and if it's very funny, it doesn't matter. By the way, when I do racial shit, some of the first people or maybe the only people that laugh are, black are, are usually black people. And black people come up to me after shows all the time that are like, yo, that was so funny. Because you don't, white people get you don't, nervous. You don't, you don't uh, give up yourself. There's a lot of b- white people who tell black jokes and you can feel them either there's hatred behind well, it. Well, they probably don't like black people to begin or, with. Or, right. or there's fear behind it. Right. And yeah, so yeah, if, yeah, you, yeah. if you go into, this is why I see a lot of uh, white comics or black comics go into black rooms and bomb because they come in there with fear. And when black people sh- are like, when you show fear to black people, it's like discomfort to them. It's right. discomfort to black people that you're uncomfortable black around them. Black people sniff out sniff And out that fear. makes them uncomfortable. And it's not like, they're not sharks, they're not tigers, they're not lions, they're human beings. No, but they can tell when someone and is And they're like, not why are you in. uncomfortable with me, bro? What's wrong with you? That's racist. Right. And so they're like, why the fuck are you in here being uncomfortable, Because bro? it is. It is. When you see a black comic bomb in a black room who's trying to do black jokes or black centered jokes, and they bomb, what's the root of all that? They're just bad. They're just garbage. They're just trash. Yeah, they're garbage. <laughs> black rooms are very, people always try, like, I was watching the Charlie the Charlie Murphy. Uh, when he got booed? No, the unsung. Thing. Oh, the I was Hollywood, like. But that, that was a part of it. But there was a Hollywood unsung, and, like, because of the Chappelle show, Charlie Murphy had a giant white fan base in the first. Massive. And white white audiences are patient. And, like, if, if there's, like, the reason why I. And patience I, is a part of white culture. Patience is a part of white we culture. We just can't. We're not supposed to get but upset. But also, patience is a good virtue for comedy because you need. It to, is for you an need audience. to get to the next thing and sure. the next thought on mm-hmm. stage. But black people don't have time for that. They have yeah. a babysitter, nigga. Go, <laughs> do the thing, bro. No, but I think it's also even more than the joke. The, the, even more than that being hilarious is culturally, culturally, the way that black people tend to like humor, in my opinion, that I dole out is quick and funny and very real they want it fast and real Mm -hmm. so if it has any kind of like hints of being like inflated or fake Mm -hmm. i think they black audiences in my opinion just don't like fake cheap kind of like corniness Mm -hmm. and white audiences are willing to sit through that shit if you or have something it. else. Oh, yeah. They, or, or, or they fucking love it. Or they fucking or love it. Or you murder out in, you know, Omaha. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, but I think that's, I think that's, but it's interesting, the the, the black Twitter verse and, and I think, stealing I think jokes is no, wild. I think there's no doubt about it in my mind that that'll take over comedy within the next five years. Do you think there ever will be a, a, a black late night host? Yeah, there's one now. You know what I mean on the prime ne- on the main networks on ABC, NBC, CBS. I bet Money Charlemagne will get a show on on prime time. You think so? Yeah. yeah, they're they're queuing him up. He's on Colbert literally like every Who, month. Who's the black dude now that's on? You're talking about uh, Trevor Noah. Yeah, but I mean on prime time television. I mean on like ABC, NBC, CBS, right? Yeah, because Trevor on the Comedy Central show, and that's not traditionally a, a late night show as much as that is like I mean, a, 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 yeah, political yeah, it's a, it's a political satire, satire show. show. It's a comedy. It's a pl- uh, news parody. Of course. Right? Yeah, yeah. But to but I don't know if they're the ever- medium itself is dying. Late night TV. And then the medium that is talking to is not... Black people don't give a fuck about late night TV because we weren't... You weren't raised on it. We weren't raised on it other than Arsenio. And Arsenio got lucky because every all of his friends were the most famous Did you like life. Arsenio? I was too late. I was, you were too young. I was too young. I was too young. Do you like the idea of what Arsenio no. was to the black community? No. no. What about Oprah? No. No. Has there ever been a black TV host that you're like, that's actually kind of more in line with what I like? This is my point. Nah. There has not been, uh, so I'm older than you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't ever remember, uh, unless it was a comedy show, unless it was like a like Chappelle like, like show what Chappelle hosting did, was probably the closest thing to me. That's what caring I Caring mean. about hosting. That's what I mean. Yeah. But that could have been just as much of a oh, and the motherfucker show. reading Rainbow. Oh, reading Rainbow. Yeah. Okay. And it was education. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I like to learn. But I wonder in my <laughs> lifetime, in our lifetime, if there'll be a black late night host on on because because I argue that maybe it is dying a little bit late night. But there could be a resurgence if it's if it's opened up the right way. And I'm not trying and to attack. That? Oh, Jesus and Mero. Yeah, but Jesus and Mero is such a that's a, again that's very meta, and those guys are dope. Mm-hmm. But their show is still for a very specific audience. I'm saying mm-hmm. take a original voiced non-white person, mm-hmm. put them on late night TV, 
and let them run a show the way they would run the show. Mm -hmm. And I want to see. I mean, let me, let, me, let me put it this way. When, when Johnny Carson did The Tonight Show, in my opinion, the reason that he was so successful and was such an icon is because Johnny kind of broke a lot of these rules that were set up before him mm -hmm. by the other hosts of The Tonight Show. Mm -hmm. He wasn't really standard. He wasn't really typical and normal. The only thing that was normal about him was that he was smooth. He was like this smooth cat who was easygoing mm -hmm. and, he, and he made you look good all the time. He, so, was, he was the closest thing to, I think, Conan's the closest thing to him at Alley. Right. I mean, Conan's incredible. I, 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 in my opinion, he's probably the best. He's To me, he, he was always my favorite. He was the most fun. Have like you done fun. couch with him? No, never couch. I only okay. did. the only I did couch on Corden and I did stand up on Conan. You have done you did stand up on? No late nights. None? Mm -mm. I thought you did for some reason. No, no. But do you ever want to? No. No, never. Nah. That was funny because I did it. I did it once and I don't know if I would want to do it again. Not for the fact I have any anything against it but like I just don't know if I want to do it I, again I sent in a thing and they and uh you know JP and all the people like wanted me yeah. to do a late night of course and I sent it in and they were like let's move this 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 and I was like no nigga what yeah they, they wanted to reshape the jokes they wanted to reshape right. the jokes the ideas right. the, what I was saying I was like I came here to say this though it's, it's hard because I, I think the idea when I when we started in comedy it was always like get a late night set and like that's like the thing and now um, for a lot of people, late night sets are not their shit. Like that's mm -mm. not their shit, no. you know. And so, um, I, I just think like times have changed so much that now whatever's happening with Netflix and whatever's going on on the internet and trying to break these rules and these grounds of what stand up is, I think that's that's you know predominantly going to be the future for young comics to go. They're not going to go. I want a late night set. They're going to go. Yo, I want to be on that one show where they mm -hmm. do that thing. You yeah. know, um, you just gotta get it where you fit it. Everything's becoming so tribal. Like, like, but uh, but but it's almost a good thing, dude. It's a great thing because it used to be so narrow. This there was a that funnel a, that only one or two get to get through. Yeah, a it was year. a weird funnel. But now you find so many outlets like you. I'm hyping you right now. Uh, Big Mouth on Netflix, right? Mm -hmm. Thank um, you, thank uh, you. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, I mean, you're writing on that show. Love it. Yeah, and that's an incredible outlet for you to to tell great comedy through an animated series, yeah. and it doesn't kind of curb you, right? Mm -mm. You guys are allowed to say whatever the fuck you want. If anybody's seen crazy. the show, it's a dope show. You the, the the topic, the exploration of sexuality is so funny and freeing as a comedian to watch and probably to do because we all think of this shit we don't want to talk about we it's mm -hmm. just uncomfortable to talk about sexuality when you're a kid mm -hmm. which by the way is my my biggest opinion about why the country is all fucked up right now we don't want to talk about the social sex social uh psychological sexuality of, of humans sexuality race we don't uh, want to talk about it uh gay shit we don't want to talk about if it. we if we instill all these ideas yeah i mean like i it's a joke i tell but it's like I give grew, me, I grew up with I grew up with trans kids from Seattle like in second or third grade motherfuckers were transitioning in second or third grade so I don't really know a world. did you ever feel like a weird world like you were left out no I was just doing my shit you never felt you know you know okay there was a there was gay kids there was trans kids right we bully them the same way how many black kids were in your school I fortunately bounced around to a lot of like black neighborhoods so I never had to like compromise myself that right. much but I knew how to finesse were any of the trans people. kids black no. no no right that's a white thing well being trans is obviously a, it comes with money. <laughs> I mean, I don't mean that. In the fucking, you say whatever you want. But I'm saying, like, all the kids that were trans, they usually came from very rich households, and then the people who became trans later in life come from poorer households because. So, trans at a young age, you think comes from wealth, and at a later age, comes from their sexuality, there's so much their freedom, choice. There's so much freedom in in in, in liquid money. Yeah, <laughs> there's so much more like. Yeah, you run out of shit. Yeah, you're just I was like, thinking. I was thinking about fuck that. Fuck it, I'm a girl now. It's like I'm fuck saying it, you I'm, probably were. You probably are. Right. I'm not gonna say what you are inside yourself. You get but. to just choose faster, bro. Right, right, bro. We get to do anything faster when you have money. Yeah. I was thinking about that the other day. I was like, uh, the, the way that my one of my richest friends ever, you know, his parents had more money than you could ever imagine. And I noticed one day when I was walking through their house that they had a lot of things. You know, we didn't have a lot of things. Mm -hmm. We never had things. Like, like it would be like like a desk with like trinkets or like yeah, yeah, yeah. ornamentation. Never had any of that. Things, yeah. yeah. And it always blew my mind because I remember thinking. Plants. Yeah, what does that cost? Like that's money. I've never had the opportunity up until now when I'm making my own money, but as a kid and as a young adult, I never thought about also buying something I didn't need. You know what I mean? Right, right. Like when you get money, you have the ability to just buy shit that you, like art is ridiculous. Art, I, art is the biggest joke in the world because you're like, you have so much money that you'll go, I could buy this thing that I think is neat. And then look at it sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. When I'm washing dishes. Right. <laughs> just because I'm washing dishes. I want to fill I, the walls. I, I just now I'm like buying, I'm just now buying art and I'm just now like getting trinkets for my house. And I was sitting there, my homie's staying with me right now. And he was like, why are you buying all this art? Why are you getting all these like little things in your house? I was like, because of women. 
Yeah. And I was like, it's women. And I was like, oh, to show that you're not just a blank. To show slot. that I'm not like a, because in my in my real life, I would have a couch, a TV, and a place to do push-ups sometimes when I'm mad. Right. Get and yourself <laughs> get yourself a pull-up bar. Yeah. yeah. And that would be like my entire apartment. That's every dude. Yeah. But like bitches need things to look at because their brains is small. I. I <laughs> I think women like shit in your home because it lets them know that you have it together, right? Cause, but cause, why would that? Just, I have money. Yeah, but see, but that, but, but but your monetary value means nothing to a woman if you don't look organized. If you don't look like you can compile it in a way that matters to them, mm -hmm. that, then you're then you're confused and you're not in a, in a good direction. It's There's a, something deeper than that. What's the deeper thing of that? There's uh, something. Well, like, women are women are are nurturers, right? Women are these women love making a home that's instinctual. I'm not being sexist. That's a real thing. Women have this nurture they they love this to nurture mm -hmm. and to grow and to kind of build something mm -hmm. internal so i think that's a, that that is a that is an innate function that women have that they like to see that someone can be organized and together and successful like oh you put your right foot forward like he oh he oh oh dude he took his off time not yeah. to go kick it with his yeah. friends yeah but he went and go do some shit for the house that makes it look presentable to strangers i have a coffee table in my living room and i have like a bunch of magazines Mm -hmm. And every time women come over, they go through the magazines. Like, what do you got? Yeah, that's that's important. Very. I have two hip hop magazines, The Source and Double XL. No, no, no. Deep Ebony. Cuts. Deep cuts. <laughs> what is it? It's like this. Uh, it's like this. This one of my friends makes a magazine. And it's like this Vince Staples. Oh shit! One. That's it's when like, it's called a zine. That's what we call a zine. zine. In it was my a generation. zine. I, yeah. I, don't, I don't. I can't. It's not something off the top. I'll say sure. that you know. And then there's one that's like a National Geographic of like some Africa shit. That's dope. Just be like. Yo, <laughs> and then there's one about like then I have like a script of Big Mouth ah that that I, ah, that's that I did not write right 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 there was like, I just but that's like, good bait just like nigga I know who did this if it was you if you if you had one if I put my my script on it that's corny yeah that's, that's corny, corny shit. you gotta have somebody else I got I got put and I put my I put my homegirl Emily Altman. So Emily like, Almond's yeah, on there, yeah. and then so you can kind of brag a little bit. It's a female. I got female writers in my room. Yeah, I have female friends. You know, I right, think funny. that makes you more appealing. Again, where do you get? Where do you get? Where do you get most of your dating done? Is it online? No, I'm. I don't. I think that's gross. You're human. You're human in a yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm. We're both out and about. I mean, yeah. you're, you're a family yes. man, of course. Yes. But like, I'm out and about, and I go to like, I hang out with musicians and shit. Yep. And so when you're a comedian around musicians, you just kind of like, yeah, do it, well. Yeah. It and so you just kind of, and I'm, I'm very patient. When it comes to when women. it comes to women, yeah. you don't like to. Do you like to cipher through? Like, how many girls are on your call log right now? I got a roster. I got what a are point we, guard. What are we talking? How many? Starting five. I got started five. That's good. The, I got started no five. more than five. Otherwise, you're taking on way too much. I got started five, and two are outside of Los Angeles. Oh right, so yeah, two, yeah, two are on. Two I got, are, I got two are new, playing overseas. I got a New York, and I got a London. Oh, okay. I just move it. Oh, okay, and then I got one that I'm like, oh god, if you were just to be here, I would kill all. Would you bitches. ever think about flying this girl here to be no. here? No, because no, yeah. she does. Because she doesn't like that. She doesn't. Oh, she doesn't want to be. I. I. Yes, I would. If she. Mm -hmm. If I. Be like, hey, sure. I'm gonna fly you out to LA. You're gonna spend a weekend She's with like, me. Nah, I'm good. Nah, I'm not like that. Yeah, and that makes me like. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you like them way more, right? Ah! Yeah. But if a girl is like, "Hey, can I come over right now? Do you want to hang out? Do you want to see a movie? Do you want to get food? That I like you." Me the fuck off, bro. Yeah, you're over I was. It. This is a story, and, I, and I, there's no way she's gonna fucking watch this. I was. Uh, I just got a relationship. I told you that like yeah. a couple months ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was doing the whole rebound girl run through a bunch of bitches thing, and I was talking to this one girl, and she was just she was very pretty, and I was like doing a thing with her, and then she was like, "And here's the thing about when you're when you when women don't want to be a rebound, they know they're the rebound." And they're just like, eh, I like fucking him. He's a cool dude. I'm going to hang around. And you say, hey, I'm not really looking for anything. And then two weeks later, they forget you said, uh, that I'm not, I'm looking, not for looking for anything. Yeah. And so she was just kind of Well, because like, two weeks is enough time that they think maybe in, that you might be, are you ready to open up something again? No, nah, I'm fucking. Yeah. No, nah, but that's what you need to say. <laughs> nah, I'm fucking. Nah, I'm fucking. And so Dear I'm, Jack, or do you want to hang? <laughs> do you want to really get deep on this relationship? Dot, dot, dot. Nah, nah I'm, I'm fucking. fucking. <laughs> <laughs> And so this is true story. We we uh we were like she kept being like, oh I can be friends with your ex girlfriend if you want me to, Yay. or oh I can I like I heard that you're out with Zach and I can like come out with you. Like she kept trying to like put her position herself right. into my life. Right. I'm, I'm Mister like nah you good we chilling we chilling we chilling yeah and we fucking one time and then she like we're going at it and it was fine and great and we're doing the fuck we were doing and she just stops in the middle of it and holds my chest and she goes. Jack, what do you really think of me? Oh my! In the middle of in fucking, the, my dick is inside of her. No oh condom. My God, that's the first thing you should have said out of your mouth. My <laughs> dick is inside you. No condom. And so, I, no, my first thing was like, it seems like you want to talk. <laughs> <laughs> she did. And I go, and I go, and I try and like pull myself out. And she's like, no, 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 keep going, keep going. No, because she knew it looked crazy. Right. So she was like, oh, I, I can realize that Jack thinks I'm crazy. 
I'm a kick I mean, this. Yeah, having a full on chat while we're having sex is very unusual. And so I, I missed it. Like, nigga, I ain't gonna slow the stroke down. We are gonna keep it going. No, then let me let me smash this up. Yeah, real so I quick. keep going. I go like five more, six more strokes, and she goes, "No, like, but for real." I'm like, "Oh, this is a no, thing." My God. And so I'm I'm just annoyed and petty. So I go out to the living room, butt ass naked, and I'm like, "Come on, I'll talk about it." And I just turn on the Shining. <laughs> Why you? Do you have the Shining available? Real I just quick? went to Netflix. Oh. I wanted to watch it. Yeah. I'm like, I turn on the Shining and I just play the Shining. I just go sit down. And I just and she's like, you want to talk? I'm like, no, 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 we're gonna watch The Shining. We're gonna watch The Shining. We're gonna watch The Shining. And I made her That's watch great therapy. And I wa- made her watch The Shining, and then she left and in the middle of The Shining. She didn't finish. She it. didn't finish. No way. No, no, no. And then she texted me. And she was like, I think we should take a break. I'm like, K, okay. K, okay. because it's like, sure. There's some people, people, women think that you owe them the full explanation. It's like, no, I owe my girl the full explanation. I owe my mama the full explanation. I owe my home girl the full explanation. Right. We just fucking shorty. Yeah. Don't make you a part of these plethora of women. Don't like these right. are top shelf women in my life. Right. They deserve the full. What do you think she really wanted to hear? What do you think she really wanted to hear? She wanted me to to be her man. She wanted to, go to she wanted commitment right then. Go to fashion things with right, her. She right. worked in fashion. She wanted right. me to go to fashion things with her, and she wanted to like get me out of my hole and do the whole thing. And it's like when when. Uh, women are like like ADD when they don't get to finish a project with a man mm-hmm. like if there was a we're all projects to women. right you're undone I'm undone yeah and the fact that she couldn't finish my project that means I'm just an ain't shit nigga <laughs> that's it's your, like is that your Twitter handle ain't shit nigga shit, I'm gonna change it <laughs> <laughs> but no it's like if women can't if they personally can't change you that means you're an ain't shit nigga right but it's like no you just might not have the tools right 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 there might, there's another also, woman out there that could do but the also thing. there's a pl- there's plenty of mature smart dope girls that know that they know they know that they can that, they can separate. yeah that thing is not the way to do anything you can't be fucking someone and ask to have a real serious conversation unless you're my wife or my or, or my or my girl let girl, me tell you you know and then it's like oh well we'll have a long-term conversation women don't right move now. like that whatever they yeah, are they i mean is. yeah that's true but whatever i mean are, look is. if my if if my wife ever stopped fucking to have a conversation mm-hmm. i would i would stop if she goes can we can we talk i would say uh three words you know better. <laughs> you know better. <laughs> I mean, come on. Yeah. But that, but but she would That's also. Funny as but that, but that but the truth of the matter you know is better. when you find when you find a wonderful woman that that knows that your balance of relationships, then all that stuff kind of comes at the right time. Mm-hmm. That was that girl being foolish. That there's no excuse for that kind of shit. Like if she was the only time to- the only time we should say something serious when we're having sex is if you are uncomfortable and you don't yeah. want to do this shit yeah. anymore. Or or, or 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 if uh, if perhaps something emergency has ha- some some emergency happened if it was like hey I just shit myself like okay oh, let's like, have hey, a real talk my boyfriend's yeah. coming home get up <laughs> <laughs> have you ever been caught with a girl while another dude came home uh, I've been caught with a girl with a man on the way oh shit. yeah phone like, kept phone kept ringing phone kept ringing and then the and you garage, knew he was the, coming no the garage opened what and you just hear the the room and she's, <laughs> like, the, she's very she like the garage opening. Um, would you jump out the fucking window no it was enough time for me to get out the door go. that's like Biggie's song you know which one? Oh god what is it uh, uh, the Tin Cracker Mammoth no 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 no, no. <laughs> no come on man I'm not that white that would be great no 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 like, that's like the Biggie song where he's talking about fucking uh, she, sit down I got a story to tell I got a story to tell isn't that mm-hmm, what it is yeah mm-hmm. she fucking would do from the New York Knicks and mm-hmm. he comes home he comes home and uh he he fucking get the ski mask and he puts the heat on him and then he makes him rob he robs the dude and fucks his girl. That's like maybe one of my favorite stories. I remember listening to that story and being like, God, I don't like it. He didn't do it, but I was like no, wild no. to think about. Have it. you have you partaken in being a side nigga? I've never I've never had anything like that be my thing. I've never I've never because you know what it's trash. Cause, but you know I'm not what a fan. I will be on the evening news as the cat who like called out the window and like fell. You know what I mean? And I'm it's that just guy. Your pure white. Yeah, booty my white ass, my ledge. white orange ass on the ledge. <laughs> <laughs> and the dude is waiting for me to fall just yeah. to break my neck again like I don't want to do that shit that's not on me but the the, the but the, I will tell you the the fear the word the, the phrase the fear you know what mm-hmm. this is the fear in sex this is something I learned really recently the fear is something that is so um, powerful and driving it's such a driving force it's it's remarkably why a lot of people cheat that don't even want to cheat it's why people do weird shit because mm-hmm. the fear so there's this thing like uh, the fear of the fear in general, right? Like, so sex and fear have, have these similar things that happen in our brain, right? Mm-hmm. Like the, the sexual drive and the fear of something negative happening or the fear in general of something going awry mm-hmm. is what drives us. It's the same kind of drives for for, for emotion, well, emotions. Do they, do they also go in love? Yeah, a little bit. But I mean, like, it's more like it's it's more about lust than love more than anything right, else, right? right. Here, here's a good example. 
You, you ever you ever choke? Do you ever choke a girl? You ever had a girl choke? With permission. Okay, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can, can, can I ch- ch- cho- ch- choke you? <laughs> may, may I choke? Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, left or right? Uh, but women never ask permission. By the way, women just go to choke. I've had my they whole hair ripped it. out of my fucking head. Yeah, they think you can handle Nothing it. Nothing been asked. Yeah, it's rude. It's rude. It's rude. Knock right? on the door. Knock on my forehead. Yeah. Say, can I pull your hair? Give me a little kiss on the forehead before you rip my fucking hair <laughs> out of my head. No, but the fear of, of death, right? Like I've talked to uh, many a young women, friends of mine who have said that the reason that they like choking specifically is because of a, a little bit of a fear. It's almost like an mm-hmm. overpowering. Like you're overpowering, you're a man. There's a good chance you could probably choke her out and kill her. You yeah. won't, but she's hoping you don't. Yeah. But there's the fear that you might. And, and so that that's, does something that's hot. It's very yeah. hot. For those women that like it. I'm not saying all I've definitely women. been there, but it's like, it's for, for the experiences I've had, it's closer towards the orgasm. That sure. You're, like, you're getting the rhythm, she's in the rhythm, and then right. you fucking put that shit right in the throat. You ever stick a, a you ever stick like a finger in yeah. the booty? Yeah. But do they freak out? You ever have one? Nah. Do they freak out? Nah. No, they like it nah. every time. Yeah. Isn't that funny? Why don't we all admit that we like that shit? It's timing. Yeah. Men have garbage timing. Yeah, men have garbage timing. And then women tell the world what, why, like when, when women are like, oh, men come fast, or all oh, men this, that. It's like, um, because a lot of men have shit time. Uh, men have shit time. It's also why, like, a lot of women spread. Not a lot of women. It's why my, fa- my thumb will go in your booty. You don't even know it's been there till it's in there. Yep. Till you till we're done, and then I gotta pop it out before yeah, you step like, away. Yeah, you just like wait. That's why that did that. <laughs> <laughs> men do have shit timing. That's why, like, you heard. I remember hearing how, how often they are. They're they very, are. Men are very. Well, we're also like men are so bad at foreplay because well, men just want to fuck so bad. So like a lot of men that don't want to go down on women, or they go down for like pff, forty seconds. It's because men are such such bags of horny shit mm-hmm. that they don't think maybe I should focus on this before I get my, maybe I should maybe I should let her eat before I fucking gorge right. because you know I eat way more food than she does right you know right what I mean? maybe I should just fucking share a little bit but I think that I think as men get older that goes away it's just when you're young you don't get it you don't fucking but get this it. is my like as a young nigga who still feels exactly what you're saying yep uh, nut nut get nut nut. Be a real nigga. Stay awake. Mm-hmm. Be like, you know, that was just me figuring it out. I had to, <laughs> that's why I always say, like, stage I had to, one. I always say I had to figure out the pussy right quick. Give me like five more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> if you nut too fast, you got to make a little. You got to do a thing, right? But a lot of men just like, I got you, and then get out. No, no, you no, got to hang no, for a minute. No. I always go two to one. Yeah, they come twice. I come once. I'm out. That's sweet. Two how, to one. how old are you? Twenty five. At, at twenty five, I grew up with all women though. At twenty five, how many times can you fucking one night? Now. You like a girl, right? Let's say you like a girl. She comes over your hanging out. Is she out. good at it? She's she's fantastic. Oh, four. If she's not good, two. But you always do two. Yeah, yeah. They. I don't like. There comes a breaking point. It's a transaction, my nigga. Yeah, but there comes a number. There comes a number in your life when when oftentimes two is a lot. I, I'm sure two. And hopefully a lot. at that time I have a wife. That's right. <laughs> but even still, you love it. Yeah. But it's even like, uh, I remember feeling, I remember being like 24, 25, mm-hmm. and I remember thinking, I could fuck for 12 hours straight. Yes. It, I wouldn't even need water. Mm-mm. But now I'm getting older, I need water. Like, I need f- fluids. I can feel myself My cramping. My knees hurt now, this is new. Do you ever cramp when you fuck? I drink a lot of water. I do, I cramp, I, I've, had, I've had two calf cramps fucking. It's the most embarrassing shit. You're like, I'm sealing out and my dick goes soft immediately because my, my calves just tighten up and I know they're cramped because I didn't drink enough water, mm-hmm. haven't had enough sleep. And you that's the problem. You gotta ride the dick until you see you back to normal. I know, I gotta get, I know, you gotta flip them. I know, I know, I know. You know the trick. We've been trying a bunch of new shit yeah. though. We've been trying a lot of There's, new positions. I, I was I was messing, one of the rosters, my power forward, is a is a twenty is a six, six, <laughs> 280 pounds <laughs> from Detroit, bitch. <laughs> Uh, Your no, power she, forward. Yeah, she was. Uh, she's thirty four, and her knees pop. <laughs> and there was this one funny ass night Bro. where I was sitting on the bed. And she was like, "Oh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to blow you." I'm like, "Oh, tight." And she gets down on her knees, and both her knees pop as she's pulling my pants down. And she stops, and she goes, "Should I stand back up?" I'm like, "No, I didn't hear it." <laughs> <laughs> but I clearly did because I'm making I can, mention. I'm making of, mention it, but I was like, "Oh, Jesus!" I don't know what happened. But like watching her be embarrassed about it is like when men get cramps. It's like women get. Our bodies is breaking down the same way your sure. body's breaking down. Don't be embarrassed. We're just doing more shit. If a girl farts while you're fucking, are you no. good? Mm-mm. I don't no. give a fuck. Yeah, see, I love I've, that about I've, you. I've had, a, I've had a bitch uh, take a full shit. In the middle of fucking? Yeah. She's like, hold on, hold on, hold on. You better make me shit. And then went to the bathroom went and, to shit, the bathroom and came back. came back. Maybe I'm, that's because the dick was so good you made her shit. I know what it was. Yeah, you know exactly <laughs> what it was. <laughs> but to, to rewind back to what we were talking about earlier, it's like, I don't know how men or women... Can make can be a part of infidelity 
and just go to bed. Over oh, and go back to sleep. I don't. I don't. I. I don't have that heart. Right. I truly don't have. What, I, did you almost get I caught? Wanted, oh no. By the guy. I, I was. Um. No, I made it out, and I went, and I never talked to her again. I was very mad at her. I didn't like. Being Do you imagine she talked to him about me? Yeah. No. 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 I'm no. sure she just brings in a new nigga and does it again. <laughs> I'm. I'm pretty sure it's they're a rotating married. door. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're married. She was very slick and charming. She was smooth about it. Smooth as a motherfucker, bro. Let me ask you. Producer's uh, wife. I want to know more about your about your youth. Um. When was the first time you got liquored up? That's a, that's something I talk, I talk to everybody about. Mean? When's the first time you got drunk? My grandpa at fourteen. Your grandpa, and you yeah. you were fourteen my years old. My grandpa and my my great uncle took me to 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 Red Lobster, and they got me a they brought their own bottle and their jacket of uh, it was like this whiskey. No, it was cognac. I forgot what the name of the cognac is. But it Doesn't like matter. Some, it was yeah. like some old black sweet man, sweet old, old black man black man cognac. And they kept pouring it. That's in a there. new brand, by the way. Old Black Man Cognac. Old Black, <laughs> and it's just it, all old Black Man Cognac is just ashy skin cells falling into a cup, <laughs> <laughs> and then this cigar old smoke Black just Man fucking cognac. bloated. There they go. Every <laughs> there they go. There they go. Yeah. There they there go. go. Drink. Oh, I'm about to I'm about to call Mashallah Ali right now. We about to get this shit popping, boy. That's like my buddy uh, EP. His dad. His dad is uh, he's from the deep south, mm-hmm. and his dad owned a uh, a little restaurant. And it was customary for him to always serve pie, mm-hmm. like after your meal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And of that was his, his sweet out, potato, his, out, yeah, cherry, his sweet apple. potato is probably the most common. Yeah. His outgoing phrase was always, you want your pie? That was always the go-to. You want your pie? But it came so, it, it would over time come, and now it's, you want pie? It, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Only locals know, pie. They, they just, <laughs> pie. Pie. <laughs> pie. <laughs> That's no, all I, it is. I, I, uh, <clears throat> I would love to talk about the South, of course, but... Uh, uh, there's, I was on the road recently with my homie Zach Fox and we were just like every. it was like one of those beautiful times where Big Mouth was popping and like people had it is popping it's still yeah, going yeah of course but like pe- people came out to see me uh, my, right, this is my first time in my career where that actually kind of happened for me where people came out just because they knew who you were yeah, yeah, instead yeah. of just being like let's go see a comedic show tonight yeah and that yeah. was like a thing I was like oh fuck this is weird that's great it's weird it's you great. know when it first happens you're just like this is fucking y'all mm-hmm. got out your house yeah, they paid. They put a jacket on? Paid to see you. And got your girl. That's crazy. It's, old. it's wild. Got me, a babysitter? Yeah, me and Zach did the whole tour of it. And it was whole sold out. And there was, there was uh, little rooms like uh, Union Hall and shit. Sure. Yeah. And um, there's this one girl at, there was one dude at Union Hall. And he was very, very nice. And he was just like, I remember you at Adam Devine's house party. Dope. And I remember you on the Comedy Store 30. And at midnight, and I've been following your career this whole time. I'm very happy to finally see you and meet you. I'm like, this is they, and I'm Mr. Like, dude, this is fucking great. Give me it a is hug. Great, I yeah. love that you're fucking talking to me right now. And then, like, his friends were there, and there's a girl that was kind of giving me the eye. I was like, oh, okay, whatever. That's a girl giving me the eye. And he's like, come on, come to my party after this. And Zach told me, he's like, oh, I already know that party. We're going to go afterwards. We go to the party. Uh, he's not there yet. The girl that he was, that was giving me the eye was there. Mm. And she was like, you know, we kind of start dancing, we start mm-hmm. talking, we start drinking. She was like, oh, come to the bathroom. And I don't do coke. So she was like, you wanna, uh, just come to the bathroom with me. I was like, oh, I'm going to watch you do coke and hopefully like we make out. Or just yeah, maybe I'll coke. get my dick touched. She full-blown sucking the nigga dick in the bathroom. Coke dick. Coke dick. It was like yes. right away. Yeah. And I'm and there's a piece of me I'm like, I'm getting my dick sucking in the bathroom. I need to get my life together. But <laughs> that sounds great. Where else is it supposed to happen? Right, right. But it, and you know, it's New York. They don't care if your dick gets sucking. Nah, bathroom. man. New York, New York like, is for coke and dick right. sucking. And I'm yeah. just like, this is tight. I'm on tour. Ah. <laughs> But then I leave and go back downstairs and bro shows up. And he's uh, like, oh my God, you really came to the party. Dude, you got to meet my girlfriend. Shorty came out after me at the party. It was her. I met your girlfriend, bro. My dick was in her throat. So, I met her. They, so Zach's standing behind them and I'm standing looking at him and looking at her. And then they start making out. And then she turns. And after they make out, she turns and looks at me and goes, shh. Oh, God. And I'm just like, I don't like this. <laughs> I don't like this at all. And like I I'm sorry thinking back to Future and Young Thug and Migos and all these rappers I think talk about it. I'm like, you're bad people. <laughs> you're bad guys. It would be great if right after she did that and he she goes shh like that to you and then you walk up to him and shake his hand and you go, It's great meeting you, man. How that dick taste? <laughs> I think that's so fucking weird. Maybe that was maybe that's her thing. Maybe that's his thing. You don't know. He could have been like, "Hey, I want you to go suck." That motherfucker you to go was like Jack's 22, dick and, 23. Uh, he doesn't know. He doesn't know. He yet. doesn't know. Yeah. Well, maybe he does. Maybe he does. And you never fucking know. You guys had fun on tour though. Are you going An back on a tour in 2019? Time. Um, I'm working on a bunch of shows, and so I just want to make a thing now. Yeah, just want to make a thing. What, do, what do you thing. do? What do you do this Christmas to take? Do you go back up uh, up north, or what do you do? No, I went for Thanksgiving, and now I'm working on a cartoon, and I'm working on a show, and I'm just like trying to make sure all the work is done because you know everybody shuts down in this city. And but you're not going to shut down. I'm, I'm just going to make sure everything's done. 
Oh, that's dope, man. I just want to go, and I want to. I'm making like a lot of premises, and I just want to like, because you know how with the beginning of the year, everyone's New Year's resolution is to be a comic, and everyone's New Year's resolution is to go see comedy. Yeah. So I I love to be prepared for January February. There should be a lot of comics resolution to quit. You know what I mean? That would be more big. people should be quitting. No, more should more people should be quitting a lot of things that they're trying to do. A lot of people do. are quitting. Like I'm great. Get this, out. It makes me so <laughs> get the fuck out. You know what I was talking about the other day, and I think you fucking agree with this. I think that comedy and the entertainment business values niceness so much that it allows people who are annoying and dumb to run over you. Oh, big time. Yeah, oh my God. Are you and, kidding me? And now I'm I'm not even, in, in the regular world, I'm not considered mean. In the entertainment industry, I'm considered mean. Well, how is that? You think because, you, you, because, Is that because you think that or because someone said that to you? Because people say that to me. Because right. if you walk up to me and you say some dumb shit, like say you and me in a conversation. This yeah. is a comedy story. We can use a comedy story as an yeah. a, a example. We'll be having a full face-to-face, looking eye-to-eye conversation. And motherfucker will come and... People will just come and grab you by your arm mm-hmm. and turn you into a whole nother conversation. Yeah. Like, that ain't rude as fuck. Right. And so, I'm Mr. Nigga, what the fuck are you doing, you corny? And I'll make fun of you in public in front of everybody. Yeah, because what they did was rude. And, but then they'll run with that and it'll go here, 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 here. And you're the bad guy because they, the bad they did some guy. rude shit. But because they know that uh, uh, reputation matters so much in this industry, they can just be rude. Yeah. Yeah, because it's so crazy. That is funny. People are allowed to be rude when they meet someone that they're a fan of because if they don't get the if they don't get in return what they exactly want exactly what they want, then you then you're the bad guy. I was. I was How come a- you didn't stop and say hi to me, man? I have to. Go, I'm going. Uh, you know, go, I've got to go. Oh, okay. You too big. Well, no, man. I'm, I'm also a human. I have a full on life. Life happened. without you, bro. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> it's insane. Actually, this happened to me tonight, and you know, it's just he didn't. People don't mean this, but sometimes when people say hi to me or they recognize me, they'll say something. And you and usually it's cool. Most of the time, people are so cool. Most of my fans that say "What's up" are cool. But I think some people get uncomfortable when it's time to leave. Like it's time to leave. Like you now you they now, don't want that moment to last long. Yeah, it's a little weird. And sometimes people people don't know how to exit. The best way to exit is just to go, "All right, man, take it easy," or "Peace," or "Later," or "See ya," or whatever the fuck you say to bye to other humans. But people do this sometimes. They'll go, "All right, man. Well, good luck." And you're like, "I no." <laughs> I don't need luck, dude. I did. This is it. I. Did, you know how you recognize me? It's because I didn't fucking need, luck, need the luck. Me, yeah. What the fuck? Good luck is such a weird. It's it's such a backhanded compliment. I know they never mean it that way, but it feels so weird when someone says good luck. It's almost like saying, "Well, I know you're struggling." It's like, no, bro, I'm I'm fine. And you want to be a dick and yeah. be like, bro, but don't wish me luck. That's a weird. It's such a cheap weird thing to wish. You wish someone luck when they're about to fight. Like, hey. If you're going off to war, I'd be like, good luck. Yeah. Don't die. They don't know yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't wish me luck when you already know that I've done the thing that you like, and I'll hopefully continue to do the thing. But it's like, luck is a weird thing. To, to say good... What you're trying to say... I also like, don't believe in luck. I don't believe in luck. Either. None of these bullshit. But like, to say good luck, what they're doing is like, you crawled into the, tenches, into the trenches in in Syria, right. and you're just like, hey man, good luck. It's good like, luck. bro, <laughs> oh, yeah, no, there's a drone good. over us. Can yeah. you shut up? <laughs> <laughs> don't good luck me, bro. I think I think the best way to say what's up to somebody always is, "Hey, I like your shit. Here's what I kind of like about you. Can I get a f- picture, maybe, or whatever?" That's straight, and then be like, "All right, man, thanks for the time." And most people are cool like that. I think because of how, like, dude, what I've seen in the past couple of years, which is crazy, is people are so connected to you, they can get access to you right now. Mm-hmm. They have they have you right now, and the engagement with fans has grown and grown and grown and grown. It used to be like, nah, I don't really, you know, I don't really have time for any of that stuff. Now, if you don't have time to say what's up to fans, they're gone. They'll leave. Mm-hmm. Like they they want to know that they can be like, hey man, I love this about you. I love mm-hmm. this thing. You don't have to say yes or hi to everything and everybody, but well, I think it's I think it's strange now that people are so connect. They can get with, to you. with social media. We've literally become people's imaginary friends. Yeah, we've literally become like that's why I sometimes don't like- they think it's more than that. Sometimes that you're like, like no, I I I get that. I know him. I know. Him. I'm friends with Jack. Yeah, and it's like because that's why that's why I don't tweet like that. Because it's like, especially when you're not a not to be this guy, but like when you're not like a white dude and there's not mm-hmm. like a bunch of things. There's not a bunch of y'all. Mm-hmm. There's not that many weird, cool, like in my pocket type of black dudes that are on the. Who do who who is the other uh, who is the other young black dude that's in the category with you? If it's a casting session. So it's like, bring out the cool section. young black dudes. I mean, there's very many actors that are way better at it and more cool. No, nah, but I'm saying, who do you go in with? Who would you be in the room with? That you would know? That, like, the people would know? Sure. Um, who's who's always with me? It would always be internet dudes. Internet dudes. Internet dudes are always there. Who's internet dudes? Like, 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 like jo, jo, Jahan. Like Batch, King Batch. Ba- like the, the Batches, yeah, Batch. the John, John, J- Jahan Jones. 
uh, I'm drawing a blank. I'm sorry. I'm, I feel very rude. No, come on. I'm sorry. But what's like, your what's your the black community is going to be so mad about this shit? Very mad. What's your what is your um what what's your uh, 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 opinion of uh, um uh, Lil Duval? <laughs> he's he's uh, he's he's great. He's great. I love him. Isn't that funny? Because I, 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 like, I was curious to know because it's like he he reaches so many fucking groups of people, right? Like he's not just he's he's the, he's the epitome of light. He's everything. Me. He's everything. People think he's funny. They think he's entertaining. Mm-hmm. They think he's they think he's smart. They think he's mean. They think like I, I've never seen somebody. You, you presence always leave with an with, with an, an emotion. Opinion, an yes, emotion and an emotion. From him. Right, and that's, that's what blown away. That's what this generation is. Right. That, well, that's he kind of encompasses that. But ironically enough. He's much older than most of the people he appeals to. Motherfucker, like 44, 45. Isn't that wild? But it, he looks so young. I think I think that song, I'm Living My Best Life, is maybe one of my favorite. I ain't favorites. going back and forth with you, niggas. I needed you to say that. Thank you. I I'm not going to say it. I got you. I got you. No, you're killing me. Up, yeah, yeah, yeah. Smile, bitch. I think it's such a funny fucking great song because it's like everybody feels that way. Mm-hmm. What, what, Regardless of your race. Like, no. I, like, I feel the exact same way. I'm not yeah. going back and forth with you, motherfuckers. Like, that's the exact same way it that we all feel. It was a beautiful song. Oh, it makes beautiful perfect song. sense. And and this is why like I never I never like I never care about what's popping now what's popping later was like right Lil, Lil Duval had one of the best uh, comic view sets of all time right and yeah, he's then, a hilarious comedian, and then man. disappeared not disappeared but like disappeared quote unquote right and then came back in resurgence this right. is like all you got to do is make sure you happy you traveling you stay smart you doing this motherfucking thing and you making good art and that's why I was like right when I when I see all the internet shit when I see all the internet dudes in the lobby. And they're like making money now. I'm like, cool, 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 cool. But I want to make Always Sunny. Right. That's you, what I want to do. Do you get do you get hated on on the internet? Do you get thrown shade nah, on the internet? No, it's not like that no for one, you. No one. No it, one shits on you it, online. No. Every, everyone who everyone everyone's pretty like if the, either they don't know or they're like that nigga's doing his own thing. Right. You don't get bothered. No. No. Is there somebody me. that bothers the shit out of you in your community that you're like I'm I'm so tired of this? Yes. Go ahead. If you can't say it, you can't say it. I understand. I can't say it. I can't say it. But there, there's a comedian. We'll talk about it offline. There literally is... A, offline. There is, I'll say this. There's there's a lot of comedians who just say memes mm. as jokes. Mm. And it's like, don't treat... Audiences are the sheep. And we're the shepherds. Mm-hmm. Whatever you teach the sheep, other shepherds got to deal with. Right. So if you, if you up there being a hack and you just doing memes and you just up there ruining the black community and making us feel stupider... And just because you want to get the bag right quick, you making brilliant black comedians jobs so much harder because they want to come because now the crowd's coming in like, I want to hear the thing I already know. Right. And it's like, bro, don't ruin art just because you garbage. Go who, do another thing. Who do you think is the best leader in black comedy right now? Che. Yeah. Michael Che. Michael Che. Yeah. Michael Che, Sam J. Do you think Che? Do you, when you say that, are you making reference more to his online, his stand up, or, or his and his show, and his late night? Because to me, all three are important. To me, his Instagram is the best thing he does. See, I think, I think, right, because it's the most free. Mm-hmm. But I think what Talking he's mad what shit. he's able to do on SNL to me is probably some of my favorite shit I've ever seen. Because all white women, Megs, it's great, beautiful. But also, he says he says funny, questionable shit that doesn't always land with the crowd. Because it's sharp and sometimes it's mean. But it's out there though. But I love that. It's supposed to be out there. It's the same way that Norm McDonald was when he was on the show. And I, I, honestly, man, I mean, I, Norm, I'm such a Norm fan. The Norm did the Norm. same shit. Mm-hmm. Norm said jokes that he knew were funny and so did everybody else. Bro went crazy on OJ. But sometimes. There's a whole reel of oh, I, I, Norm's yeah. OJ shit. That's it's why he got so fired. Good. Because so he, he wouldn't stop talking about fucking OJ. Mm-hmm. But I mean, like he he made sure that it was like if it's funny, it's funny. It yeah. d- it doesn't matter. Yeah. And and if I'm gonna say something about it, I'm gonna say something. Yeah. Che does the exact same thing. And I think that's like it's gonna all circle around. I'm not really fearful of of that type. Of, like uh, I was talking to this nigga in in New York. I was like, yo, how do you how do you deal with everyone kind of low key hate hating you? Do they? Che? Yeah. Really? Not everyone, but like the Megs. A lot of the Megs and the don't blog, like them. the blogs and the fucking. The articles, and yeah. the thing that really keeps this thing all alive. But that's what happens when you're on NBC. That's what happens when you're on a network show. You think? Well, yeah, man. Network they, sh- they love Kate McKinnon. They love Addie Bryant. They love all these other white women. Yeah, but they don't. But okay, but 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 like Michael Che pushes the envelope on purpose. These other people don't push the envelope like that. I mean, I'm, I'm not take, discrediting their work. I'm just saying, like 
Che says things that he knows is going to get a rise. Yeah, but like the thing that he says, the people it is it, frustrate. What my frustration is coming from, like the thing that Che questions, the thing that Jay Che is attacking is patriarchy, and that's what you guys kind of champion. Well, that's what they are about too. Yeah, so it's like don't just because they're they're he's attacking your patriarchy doesn't mean he's not well, attacking white. patriarchy in general. Right, it's because they're white though. Yeah, but it's like so they I, feel, if, they if feel, someone attacks black male patriarchy. I'm still laugh. There's a lot of black female comedians and a lot of women. There's a lot of gay com- comics that go up there like black men do this and that's trash. And I laugh at the shit, right? Because I know we be doing trash shit. But white women have this holier than thou thing that they ain't never done no trash shit. Right? It's crazy. Right? Of it's course. Yeah. It's crazy. crazy. Well, yeah. Everyone's done trash shit. Yeah. But Literally like, everybody. I think white women are genuinely the only group of people on earth. Gay people take their L's. Trans people take their L's. White men take their L's. They, you know, tiki torch it out after a while, but they take their L's. Everybody takes the L, but white women are like, no, we're perfect. <laughs> and it's crazy. <laughs> They're literally like, we're, we're, they, we ain't done nothing. I think that's, that's the solution for all this bullshit, to be real, is that everyone needs to admit that we're flawed as fuck. I mean, there's an, article, trash. there's an article out that's out right now. I'm going to send to you after this. Mm-hmm. That's about some of the biggest leaders of the women's movement, of the women's march, that are now getting... Uh, Me too. Well, they're getting looked into for some bullshit, for some anti, like some fucking racist ass. What's the anti Semitic shit? That used to be with um, not what's uh, Anthony Bourdain. Oh, dude, I know. Come Crazy. on, man. That whole thing. Crazy. That whole thing. I woke and, up in a hotel with Joe Rogan in Chicago, and he texted me. He said, "Wait, wait, 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 wait." Huh? Say that sentence again. <laughs> I'm seven rooms. Say that sentence seven again. Rooms, dog. Say that sentence again. Come on, man. He's too rich to share rooms. I wanted to snuggle, bro, but no, not at all. You're no, shining but, his bald bro. head, and you're just fuck up. You're like, Joe, look he at. He was this. making me shave his toes, and he was, he was no, no. But he, but he texted me, hit me in the room, and was like, "You won't believe this." Bourdain killed himself, and then we had an uh, forever conversation about that whole thing. About, and I don't want to get into fucking that and feed into Hirsch bullshit, but. Man, what a fucking scam! What a bad person! What a scam! What, what a, a scam! What a beautiful soul that she was that she was attached to, but what a bad person. that she that she ruined a dude that she yeah. ruined. I mean, that was him. Him. Yo, and, you know, you know what that's like. That's like that. That's like we. He he was a you know he was like a perfect cut of meat. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He was the perfect cut of meat, and then she left us with like a, a sizzler. You know what I mean? Yes. It's like that's what you did to us. Yeah, yeah. You, uh, you had a perfect cut of meat, and you gave us some bullshit. I'm very you gave me a skirt steak. I'm very desensitized from death from like personal experience, but like the only you two, like had a lot of people die. In yeah, yeah, yeah. Seattle's more suicide than like killing, killed. But like I have a lot of friends who like killed themselves. Same. Yeah. In your in your personal family, have you had, have you had a lot of people die? I've had a lot of people more get killed in my family and more friends been killed by killed themselves. Damn. And so like I'm very desensitized. I think it's funny. I think death's very funny. Can and, like, be. And people don't really fuck with that as much. But the two deaths this year that like kind of like hit I, you. I was like. Bro, yeah. if they can't do it, I can't. Let me guess. Anthony Bourdain and Mac Miller. Oh, I was going to say Mac Miller, yeah. I Both knew, of them I, motherfuckers I, I met him. rocked me. I know, I liked rocked. him. Rocked. He came to the comedy store one night. Did he? He was there with Chance the Rapper's little brother. I was doing a 12 o'clock spot. And it was after, it was like, a, it was one of those beautiful nights where it like went like you, then the Fahim, then Eleanor, then right. me, and we're all on fire. And like, yeah. it was packed as fuck until oh. like fucking 2 a.m. in the morning. It was one of those beautiful comedy story right. nights that I will tell my children. Hopefully about. he'll remember that shit forever. No, and, you know? and, and, and hopefully he, he knows that. He was cracking the fuck up the entire oh, man. night. And someone tapped me. They're like, yo, Mac Miller here. I'm like, I'm about to sauce. <laughs> I was like, I'm about to fucking sauce. Good. And I have, I know friends that know of him. And we're like, it's like weird circles. And he came up to me and we drank all night. And and this is one of the things he always kept talking about. He kept talking about Groucho Marx. Uh-huh. He kept talking about uh, Mel Black. But, uh, I'm saying it's like uh, Mel Brooks. Mel, no, Mel, the dude who made Looney Tunes. Oh, 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 um, uh, bl- uh, bl- uh, black. Black. black, black or black, black. I don't know. I'm I'm drawing a blank on it. Uh, I'm drawing a blank. Joan blank. Rivers. Yeah. Um, Penny. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Penny. And we just talked about old comedy the entire night Flip wow. Wilson yeah he, his 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 uh, he knows all of it yeah no I, well I can tell he baby's big, kids we he, talked about all he that was a big shit, comedy fan I met him we did punked and he was one of the hosts that came along and glommed onto us a lot in a good mm-hmm. way positive like he loved our energy me and, and and this other kid Nick and man he he was so much fun to fuck with and to fuck around with because he was down he just was really into it a lot of the best hosts that we had back when I did punked many a moon ago Maybe I mean mean, it was, bro. But the but the the people that the people that liked us the most that we liked the most they were fans of they loved comedy, you know. Mm -hmm. And I was I was it's a beautiful and I was nothing back then. I was bullshit, but he was great, man. I got nothing but good things to say about Mm -hmm. that kid, except for the fact that it's a fucking it just makes me annoyed and sick that people die from drugs when they're young because it's bullshit. But he didn't. It was fentanyl. 
Yeah, that shit's that shit's fucked. It's just, it should be in nobody's hands. It's a garbage cut of cocaine. It should be in nobody's hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like that shit shouldn't be out in the world. It's crazy that it's in it. It's because I don't, I don't know what it does necessarily. I'm not that well versed with what fentanyl is. Yeah. Well, it's well. First of all, it's far, it's it's pharmaceutically made, so it's 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 regimented. They know it's they legally know. made. They know what they're doing. Of course they do, man. What do you mean? They gave the black community HIV. We'll be right back after these breaks. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did a I did a joke on uh, uh, Chocolate Sunday. Uh oh. And uh, and I and the Chocolate Sunday for those that don't know is the name of a show at a club here in Hollywood, and it's Chocolate Sundays because it's Sunday night and chocolate because black people everybody's black. But it's a very very fun show. It's one it is. Best, it's, it's a one phenomenal the, it's, show. I would say one of the best shows. In Ron, the that's where city. I met Ron G. One of the best shows in the fucking city. And yeah. one of the jokes I told, I think that it's very funny that the karma has happened that. We've gone from the crack epidemic to the opioid epidemic, mm. and how like the, the how the opioid epidemic all kind of correlated with the uh, hip hop, and how hip hop went from a thing where uh, hip hop came out of the crack epidemic, and now led to the biggest artists in the world telling white kids to do opioids. Yeah, that's wild. And it's like take pills. Ah, that's karma, wild. bitch. Yeah. We got you back. <laughs> that's payback. The yeah, black, that's, that's what I was, as I'm saying. Everything circles. Yeah, Everything fucking payback. circles around, and so that's why it was. It sucked that my joke works against, worked against one of my favorite white musicians. That did suck, but it's but but the joke is good because the joke is good because it's true. Here's yeah. what's so funny: half a million views, baby. Go check it out. <laughs> Pump it. The 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 hip hop that was birthed in the in the seventies and the eighties and the nineties. The the growth of hip hop then was kind of on the shoulders of marijuana and and liquor right like that yeah. was kind of the thing always of yeah, like yeah. Of, of, of smoking weed and yeah. having some drugs and that's when weed was a drug but that's also when 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 the music kind of tonally was a, was similar to party shit it was that kind of vibe i say a hip not uh-huh. hot a, a hippie, hippie to the hippie, hippie to the hip, 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 hip but, but you don't, don't stop, stop. That's, yeah but it's so funny to think about that now that pills get into play and what happens is fucking mumble rap becomes a real thing right mm-hmm. garb and i'm not uh, you clearly understand Huge i'm separating mumble rap fan, but you, yes. you you know i'm separating people like mac miller from that category yeah, they're, not, yeah. they're not even close but i'm saying that's funny i wonder what the next synthetic drug is going to be that's going to introduce its way into music and influence how music is then made right because well, it depends. music it depends. does follow that cocaine in the 70s influenced so much rock and roll Cult, cult, culture and art and music and comedy itself all follows policy. Oh sure. So whatever this, whatever the the people pulling the strings to the top, wherever they want to go with this country, if they want to keep giving pharmaceutical country like shit or co- climate control, whatever right. the fuck they want to do, we're gonna talk about it, and that's what the art gonna be. Yeah. I don't think we have as much control as we try to pretend that we do. We don't. No, we have to talk no, about any, what that anyone. is. Anyone, like as much people like. Like as much as a, 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 a Kendrick Lamar or Drake thinks that they have party, no, you're just commenting on a thing that that's happening a, right now. A white old fuck writes on a paper. That's a great. That's a great album name. Oh, white old fuck. White it? old fuck. White old fuck paperwork. <laughs> 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 it is true though. Yes, it's a comment. But but I'm saying we have a duty to do it. A lot of people in America can turn a blind eye to like what's going on and say fuck this shit or this is boring or this mm-hmm. is annoying or I don't want to think about it. We really can't get away from it, dude. Even if as a comic you don't want to talk about that shit, you still can't get away from hearing it as a comedian, which I think is yeah. a good thing. As a comic, you're forced to talk about shit that's going on in the world mm-hmm. because you're in it. If you didn't, you you're, you wouldn't have a long you wouldn't have a long lasting career in comedy. Mm-hmm. Any good comic, one of the greatest quotes I ever heard about Lauren Michaels for Saturday Night Live, he says, "You want to know what's going on in a in the world? Watch SNL." And listen, as people can talk shit about SNL as much as they want, I love that fucking show. I've always been a fan it's, of that show. That's a fact. I've always been a fan and I think what that says says volumes because that show does its its best. Yes, it's opinionated, it's slanted, but it doesn't matter. They have they are showing you week to week what in the world is kind of going on and they give you an angle. I don't even think it may not be the angle that you fucking love, but it's an angle. That's what I like. I don't even think the show is as left leaning as it tries to make it itself out to be. Well, 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 it's of course not, but people who are on the right would want you to believe that and so that gets inflated, right? So then because SNL gets attacked by people like Trump the president tweets about that. That's yeah. hilarious to me. Uh, well, SNL's in a weird position where the left and the right attacks them. Or total, of course. Because the left is like, why is there no transgender nigga babies with fucking like that? And why aren't there, by the way? Good question, Chris. And why aren't Sam? There? Huh? Huh? <laughs> but I think. It, but I think the truth of the matter is like, yes, they're both going to get mad at both sides. But the, the but the right media tends to do this thing where they go because Trump said whenever Trump says something about a thing. Right, if it's you, the world's news. Right, it becomes the world. It becomes it becomes bigger than itself. And people are like, "Why are you always talk about him?" Because he's the fucking president, bro. Yeah, man. Because well, you have bored to of hearing about it, right? Yeah, because you've never had a president who talked this much ever, 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 ever. I don't even think we could have somebody that Jimmy talks Carter this much. flies commercial today. 
ah, no, it's that's how next, that's how humble that sat next to him in 24 F last week, bro, and he was hugging my shoulder space. Come on, Jimmy. He was, he was holding the fucking arm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what side is yours, <laughs> bitch. It's your fucking peanut um, farm. Yo, I'm so happy that you came through. Tell me Thank this. You so much, man. Tell, tell, tell the people at home where they can see you, they find you, and what you want them to know. Uh, you can see me at Comedy Store. I'm, uh, I'm traveling a little bit less this year, but like you know, watch Big Mouth and all that good noise. And follow me on Instagram. I'll probably be posting a couple shows. Twitter, Instagram, Twitter at is, Jack Knight. Uh, at It's Jack Knight, and then Instagram is... Uh, Jack Knight one two three. There's a couple of clips on there. Why did you do that, Jack Knight one two three? Because there was already a, other Jack Knights. Because I'm a child. <laughs> I think my my email is the same thing. Is it really? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not gonna change it either. Because Neil Brennan made fun of me for. I'm like, fuck you, Neil. Fuck Brennan. you. I'm gonna keep, keep it. it going. Yeah, keep yeah, it. Yeah, just because you, you said you, something. Are you doing any shows uh, coming up that you want to plug or promote? Or no, are you good? Um, New Year's Eve. Oh, be out for, for New Year's. Yeah, bro. Oh, New Year's Eve. I'm going to Chicago and No Name. My and, city. Yeah, no name. The musician and a couple of other musicians, Tierra Wack and um, uh, Shmino and Saba and all the one of some of the best musicians I think are out right now are doing a New Year's Eve show, and me, Teddy Ray, Sam J, Langston Kerman, Punky Johnson, the best. A lot, a lot of my favorite comedians in this generation are all going to be opening for this musical show. And when I was a kid, I would always see Most Def hanging out with uh, Chappelle, and I think that's you know, I think I'm. Not either close to either those two human beings, but I'm hanging out with my most deaths right now. That's dope. Yeah, where is it? Tell them where it is. Tell them uh, where they can get tickets uh, and all that um, shit. If it's already not sold out, the the 30th isn't sold out. The 31st isn't sold out. But I think it's at um, what's that? What's that major? What's that regular theater in in Chicago? It's not the Lincoln. Chicago Theater. It's not the Chicago Theater. It's, oh, the Vic. Oh, the Vic. Yeah, we're doing That's the Vic. That's where I shot my special, man. The Vic. Great yeah, special, the Vic by the way. Theater. Time. Vic. We're at the Vic. At the Vic. Go check them out at the Vic on the 30th and the 31st. Uh, you know, at Ch- Cheeto Santino, the Slugger Santino will be in Bakersfield on the nineteenth. I've never done that. Never done that room. Never been up there. So come out, have some fun. Then the next weekend, 24, 25, 26, I'll be in D.C. Uh, or Arlington, whatever. Same shit over at the Draft House, doing my fucking thing. So come out. I'm gonna invite Trump. Let's, <laughs> let's see if he comes. Through. Oh shit! And then a uh, Dead Crow February. Dead Crow in February. Yeah, yeah. Headline Jack Dead Knight, Crow. Andrew last Santino. Weekend, yeah. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> Goodbye. Whiskey. Whiskey. Whiskey.